Should, this is review, but you guys should know how to do this, but I'll go over it with you guys. Um, for um, example number four, we're asked to draw the graph of um, 2x plus 3y equals x. And you might be saying to yourself, well, Mr. Adams, I know how to graph, and the easiest way to graph is if the equation is written as y equals mx plus b, because then I just go through and I write down what the y-intercept is. So I start at the y-axis, and then I just use my slope, which is the up and over, to find the second point on the line, and then I'm good to go. So if you could just fix that little equation thingy. So how do I do that? Yes. Huh? Get y by itself. Get y by itself. You get a sucker. Good job. Okay. So now what we want to do is get y by itself. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. So we're going to solve for y, basically. And when we solve for y, it will look like this. y equals mx plus b, if we do it right. So these will cancel. Boop. And then I get 3y is equal to... Now, I want to put the negative 2x in the front because it kind of looks like that mx plus b sort of thing, right? So, what's next? Then, you divide by three. then we divide by 3. Okay, this I'm going to hurt somebody with this. Ready? Oh, I knew somebody was going to get injured. All right, so we divide everything. Remember, when we multiply or divide, we have to do every single term. Don't forget one. So I get y is equal to negative 2 over 3 times the quantity x plus 2. Whew, that was a lot of work. We're done, right? No, no it says the graph. It's one of those two-part problems. I need to take a drink of water. Pre-calculus is hard. All right, so now I want to graph this bad boy. So... I take my xy plane, and this isn't that hard. The y-intercept is positive 2. Now what that means is that I am going to cross the y-axis at 2. Now my slope is negative 2 over 3. Now it does, what did I say the negative slope meant? It means that it falls. Right, and the top number represents the up or down, and the bottom number represents left or right. So I could look at it this way. I could think to myself, I'm going to go down to one, two, and I'm going to go over one, two, three. One, two, three. And so what that does is that lets me use the slope, which is down two, I'm going down two, over positive three. And that gives me a point right here. When I connect the two points, then I have my line. And you say, well, Mr. Adams, I know that you are a brilliant mathematician, but I'm not quite sure if that's the right answer. How do I double check it? That's a great question. You take your handy dandy calculator and we can graph it. Now, this only works if you get this equation right. Like if you make a mistake, you know, uh, wah, wah, wah. but if you if you've solved the equation for y and you've got that correct, then what you could do is you could hit y equals, which is this button right here, and then in parentheses put negative two divided by three. Just put the x after that, and then plus two. And so what I'm doing is I'm just entering this equation into the calculator. Now, if I hit graph, and there might be all kinds of funny stuff going on in this calculator. So, uh, yesterday we did some scatter plots. So, I need to go in and change the window. So, I want to change the window to like a basic one. Oh my goodness, that's a big number. So, my minimum x value should be negative 5. 
My maximum x value that I want to display on the calculator could be positive 5. Um, go to the y minimum, let's do that at negative 5, and then the y max at 5. Now if I hit graph, we'll see the line. And see where it crosses? The y-intercept is at 2, right? Each one of those little ticks is, you know, you're counting by 1. And then my y, or my x-intercept occurs at 3, which is just like my graph. So I must have done it correct. Any questions?